Shielding Effectiveness The test reports about the effectiveness of shielding paints are confusing and in a way misleading. Reducing radiation levels is expressed in decibels, like noise reduction. The amount of protection you are given with a product will be different depending on the frequency of the radiation that's trying to get through. So, at 1 GHz you may have a certain amount of decibels protection but this would normally be less at 12, 16 or 20 GHz. The decibels are important, but only in relation to the frequency that they're referring to. The thing to remember also is that one could easily be misled by making the logical assumption that a product offering you 42 decibels of protection at frequency A is only 10% better than a product offering 39 decibels protection at that same frequency. And that's so not true. For every three decibels, the protection ability doubles. So a product offering 42 decibels over 39 decibels is twice as good and twice as beneficial. I'm sure you're catching on now that we need high protection against the high frequencies and that through a product that was designed with enough insights that in order to help people restore health, not all ingredients are acceptable in order to achieve that high performance. It needs to be a healthy product in itself too. There are shielding paints out there that contain latex, for example, and so many people have intolerances to latex, you can just imagine. In our way of thinking, it makes no sense to help a patient with one problem and give them another. When it comes to shielding and protection being expressed in percentages, it is even more misleading than the decibels I just explained. 90% shielding, you see this advertise, just means 10 decibels. 99% shielding is only 20 decibels. 99.9% .9 shielding is 30 decibels. 99.99% is 40 decibels. And now it is finally getting interesting if health is your interest. And 99.999% shielding is 50 decibels, and that's really what we want and what we need. 